As a first year beekeeper, I can tell you there is a lot to learn <laughs> with these girls right here. This is early March and they have already decided that they're going to come out and hang out and go collect some pollen. And then one day, and this is March, they were all bearded up on the front of the box. And I'm like, what is going on? Are they swarming? Because that sounds like something they would do. Go out and swarm and try to leave. And I kind of got a little nervous. But then I thought, perhaps they're just hot. Because this is what they do in the summer when they're hot. So I thought I'm going to take out the um, extruder at the beginning here, which just has a little opening in the winter. And I'm going to change it so it has a big opening uh, so that some cool air can get in there. Because I can just assume that could be one of the reasons they were bearding up. Because they didn't appear to be going anywhere. So I took out the extruder. Here you can see the small hole. Uh, all the way to the right and then the larger hole as I turn this around and that would let a little bit more ventilation go in. I usually don't like to have the bigger hole because I feel like the smaller the engines the better they can protect it from other bees who may be trying to rob them but in this situation uh, <laughs> I don't need them all bearding up on the front like that. Don't need them to be uncomfortable. I want the girls to be comfortable. So I slid it back in nice and carefully and I kind of watched it and they after a while they kind of calmed down and they started going back in. But I thought huh, this might not be enough. Uh, what I did was actually did an inspection and I opened the top and what I noticed was they were chock full of bees in there. Yeah, so they've got these two boxes and no place to go and I thought that might be one of the reasons. So I decided I would put a Honey Super on. Now a Honey Super is the smaller box. You can see it on the right there. It's not as deep as the two deep boxes. The bottom box is where they have their brood and the queen lives. The middle box, or the upper box in this situation, is where they usually store all their honey and there's plenty of honey in here so I thought I could put the super on which is the third box you can see these are all empty and this would allow them to go up there and start making some honey so I stopped feeding them at this point um, but they did have plenty of stores of honey up there and I just said I'm gonna put on the super and that's gonna give them a little bit more room and I thought this would really help uh, give them a little bit more room they won't be as hot they won't feel like they need to swarm <laughs> I'm thinking you look how many are just on the on the top board there you can just get an idea of how many bees are in that box which is great I mean I had a great I had a great winter uh, for a first-time beekeeper I'm really happy about that uh, but I want to keep them I want to keep them around from for more than one year so that could top goes back on and I'm thinking this is this is fine no problems here here whatsoever right well about two days later <laughs> i come down the stairs in the backyard and i look over at the hive and i'm like what is going on it's hard to tell but there are thousands of bees just just swirling around like doing orientation flights and they're all all of them just pouring pouring out of the hive and they all bearded up on the front of the hive and i thought well they are swarming they're gonna leave um so my first instinct was well if they do i want to have another box just in case, maybe a place for them to go. So I got another box out here, and this is just an empty box on the other side of the yard, so at least 100 feet, about as far as I could get away from it. And uh, I took some propolis from the first hive, and I scraped it in there. So I thought, well, maybe if they find it, it'll seem more uh, like something they want. So I just put a rock on top of that because we've had some really high winds, so it won't go anywhere. Meanwhile, I had decided a while back I wanted to make a new stand because I had just the cinder blocks on there and ants were climbing up there. And I thought, I have these bottles, water bottles, and I cut them and I'm like, I could use the bottom to grow flowers in, which I'm going to put dirt in there and make them in flower pots. And then the bottom... Look at this. When turned upside down, I could put water or oil or something in there, cinnamon, so to keep the, the ants from wanting to climb up to the beehive. So this is the new stand. So now I need to do an inspection. I haven't been in the box all the way. I've only looked in the top because of the, we've had cold nights, even though they're bearding up in the day. It's really weird. North Carolina weather, hot in the day, cold at night. So I was like, let, let's do a whole inspection and let's switch out. This bottom stand with just the lousy, ugly cinder blocks and put on the new groovy stand with the plastic cup thingies, <laughs> this ant traps. Yeah, that's good. That's good. So the top box here is the one I just put on the other day. I have a high beetle track in here. No high beetles. That's good to know. I'll probably put some more uh, high beetle traps on just in case, though. And I just opened up, I just wanted to see what they were doing, even though it's only been a couple of days. I know they weren't really going to have too much going on, but I just wanted to take a look at this Honey Super and see what's going on. So I pulled out one of those frames, and uh, they're interested. They're all up in there, and they're interested, and it's giving them space, and they're obviously utilizing it. So that was good. So that Super's coming off just for a second here while I do this. This is the second box, which I have inspected recently, and I know there's honey up in there. So I'm just going to skip that box for now and get down to the bottom and see what's going on. Now, the bees are starting <laughs> at this point. There's... 
they're all flying around me. It kind of gets a little nerve wracking. So I just wanted to see what kind of what kind of things I had going on in this bottom board right here. So I'm going to pull it up. And you can take a peek at what's going on. It looks really good. They've got they've got some brood going on. And at least in the next one, they've got all kinds of stuff in there, uh, ready to ready to go. Keep it going. I I did not find the queen, but I didn't look very hard because really this was more about me taking off the and putting in the bottom stand on and taking the old stand away. But again, I did want to just look around a little bit and see what I could see. And everything looks super good to me. Now I've got a lot of stuff going on on the top there. I'm probably going to scrape that off before we put it back on because that, that also sort of seems to me like they've run out of room. Uh, yeah, so we're going to take care of that as well. So this bottom box is going to come off and I'll just down to the bottom board and see what's going on there. I'm, I'm really hoping nothing. <laughs> and and uh, to my pleasure. Yeah, not a whole lot. Just bees. I thought maybe there'd be dead bees in there. There weren't. I thought maybe I'd see some mites. I didn't. Uh, not mites. Uh, hive beetles, which I didn't, which is really good. So at this point, it's just dismantle this thing. Like there's some old wood here. I had uh, just to prop the whole thing up, some cinder blocks, and I'm just taking the whole thing away. And I'm going to grab the new super duper... <laughs> <laughs> fancy bottom box board stand <laughs> stand there we go after we get these out look at all the bees flying around it's just they're just like but they're cool they didn't and i got stung once in the hand because i'm not wearing the gloves uh just have my fingers exposed it's just easier to work that way if i take one or two stings in the hand i can deal with it and uh, i have my bee suit on which is just a pair of jeans <laughs> and a sweatshirt put the bottom board back on I'm just going to assemble this thing back together and uh, and close it back up and we'll see. I'll leave it alone for a week or two. Uh, they, they get adjusted to that new super up on top and uh, we'll see where it goes from there. And hopefully, I, hopefully they're not going to swarm. Um, I didn't really do a close enough inspection to see if there were any queen um, uh, cells in there. I know I should have, but like I said, this was more about, I did want to do an inspection to the best of my ability, but at the same time, I did want to get the thing put back together on the new stand. I did want to put some high beetle traps. I actually bought some new ones because I found that these things are actually pretty cheap and the ones I bought from last year actually started to crack. And when they crack, the oil spills out and then you don't want oil in your hive. So I got a set of new ones. So I got about, I'm going to put four and put one in each corner. And I put a little piece of peppermint. I don't know if you can see it. There's a little piece of peppermint up there because I've, I've read that uh, the high beetles don't like peppermint. So the bees seem to like it. <laughs> so, so I'm just going to put the whole thing back together and then we're going to be done. And that is what's going on in the bee world for March, right? This is just one not even we're not even really in the spring of it yet uh on what the homestead 